Rainey, congratulations on your First Amendment Award. It is so well deserved. Thank you for producing rigorous accountability journalism in the public interest about all of the stories around the world that impact us all so deeply. I really want to acknowledge and appreciate that you are helping to change the face of who gets to tell investigative stories. And just as importantly, you are expanding the notion of who gets to be at the center of those stories. That is game changing for so many of us. And I am just eternally grateful to you for your mentorship, for your inspiration, for your leadership, and maybe most importantly to me personally for your friendship. When I first met Rainey, I remember that stepping into the offices on Guest Street was like stepping onto the deck of a battleship. The temple of production, the marathon fact check sessions, the wall of Emmys staring down at you. I was a scrappy independent filmmaker and this was Frontline, a legendary institution. Needless to say, I had my doubts. The whole place thrummed with energy, but I feared that energy was the whirring of a machine that would round off the edges of my film to make it fit neatly into their weekly slot. And then I met Rainey. I'm not sure what exactly my expectations were, but she confounded and surpassed them. Rigorous and diligent and careful, of course, but Rainey's eagle eye for story, her genuine curiosity, her desire to engage and understand the world rather than just editorialize around it, those were truly special. And her bravery, not just to take on hard stories or upend conventional wisdom or go up against dangerous villains, but her willingness and readiness to change, to turn on a dime, to turn this whole battleship around if the story demanded it. That was truly inspiring. Under Rainy Frontline isn't a machine. It's a team on a mission. Defending journalism in a moment when it's under attack and always pushing forward the boundaries of storytelling closer and closer to its beating human heart. Hi, Rainy. Um, and everybody here to celebrate Rainy. Um, my name's Don Porter and I'm a documentary filmmaker. Um, I had the joy of working with Rainy. Uh, she asked me to come in and work with her on the Unresolved Project, which grew and grew and grew. Um, and I got to see her legendary um, work ethic up close and personal. The thing that uh, just astounds me about Rainy is uh, she is tireless um, and always positive, even under a lot of stress. She's ethical, she's honorable. Um, she's just the kind of leader that you want to have behind you when you're doing the hardest work you can imagine. I've been working with Frontline for many, many years and on many, many films with Rainey Aronson. I remember when she came to me and asked me what I thought uh, about her moving to Boston from New York, uh, where she was living and working at the time, and joining the executive staff there, uh, the editorial staff at Frontline. I said to her, I think, if, if I remember correctly, uh, that it would be a lot of work. Uh, of course, I didn't know Rainey that well then, and but anybody that does know Rainey, that would not scare her. She has brought enormous energy uh, enormous commitment and an enormous amount of passion to the job at Frontline, and she has expanded the series in so many ways. Uh, I, I'll, I'll say this about working with Rainey. She allows you an enormous amount of freedom to tell the story that you feel committed to telling. And she won't hover, she won't meddle, but when you're finished, when you present a rough cut to her, she will rigorously uh, question you as to whether or not you've made the, the best possible arguments you can make um, for, for the film that you're presenting. Today, it's very special to pay tribute to a woman that I truly admire and love. Rainey and I forged our career at Frontline many moons ago, and of course today, she's my boss. As a boss, she is one tough person. She is demanding, exacting, rigorous, just so impressive. She has more energy than anyone I've ever met. As a person though, she is caring and generous, a cork of enthusiasm in the midst of difficult times. I am so proud of you today, Rainey. You have led us through treacherous times as journalists, where we are attacked for what we do 
and where truth is confused with lies. I have to say you have always been on the right side of history. You always stand for what matters. Rainey, I'm so pleased you're being honored with this award. The First Amendment often gets used as a shield to defend prejudice and the lowest expression of humanity. But you, you're always reaching for the highest expression of our principles and for our highest aspirations for society. Through your leadership, you've demonstrated what it looks like to really consider how we represent the public in public media, not just in the stories we tell, but from whose point of view and who participates in the reporting and editing and producing and presenting of those stories domestically and around the world. Your commitment and tireless work are an example to all of us working to uphold press freedom. Journalists in the United States face rising levels of hostility. I would say unprecedented levels of hostility. And I have personally experienced this uh, due to my work with Frontline and ProPublica. My family's been doxxed, we've been hacked, we've been robbed, we've been threatened. We've had to leave our home repeatedly. We've needed armed security at times. And there are two neo-Nazis currently serving federal prison sentences because of their campaign of harassment and abuse directed at me and my family. And I'm telling you all this because throughout it all, Rainey has done everything she could to protect me, protect my family, to safeguard our lives. And this is the hard work that she does that people never hear about. This is what happens behind the scenes that you don't know about. I'm thrilled that you're being honored. Congratulations. And I look forward to all that the future holds and all the incredible work that you're going to produce. Enjoy. Congratulations, Rainey. It continues to be an honor to be a part of your team. Congratulations to you, so well-deserved. Um, and here's to doing more great things. I can't think of anyone that deserves this honor more than Rainey Aronson. You are a true inspiration. Congratulations. Here's to you. I think people like myself are very, very grateful to get to work with someone like Rainey. It's wonderful to be together this evening and to be the recipient of the New England First Amendment Coalition Stephen Hamlet Award. I have read so much about Stephen Hamlet through the years and to think that my work resonated with you all regarding his was deeply meaningful. It's also given me a moment to reflect, of course, on the importance of the First Amendment, but also how the First Amendment and accountability journalism work hand in hand. Of course, without the First Amendment, the work that we do at Frontline that investigative journalists do in the United States would not be possible. So I also wanted to thank all of you at the First Amendment Coalition for your hard work to protect the First Amendment and essentially the work that we do in journalism. It is a partnership with you all. I also wanted to say that it gave me a moment to reflect upon my own career and where it all started. So I started as a young reporter in Taipei, Taiwan. I was working for a local newspaper there, and I was just a cub reporter. What was happening in Taiwan at the time, however, was profound. It was the first time that the people of Taiwan in the mayoral elections were voting. It was a democracy that was forming right in front of my eyes. As a young reporter, I remember the excitement. I remember the absolute tears in the street when people voted for the first time in their adult lives. It was incredible to see that energy. And then also as a reporter with a deep curiosity about fairness and equity, I started to ask questions that we are still asking today here in America, of course. Questions about access, questions about equity, questions about whether or not people had the ability to go and vote. I remember writing these stories at the time with so much energy and passion for the form of journalism, which is to be a record for what I was seeing, but also the ability to ask those questions and be curious enough and skilled enough in the questioning of people to be able to get to the bottom of things. One of the things I learned there was that those very questions promoted change and questions from without journalism, and that was deeply gratifying at the time. I wanted to say that as a young journalist, I have a lot to be grateful for. I had a terrific editor who I'll never forget, and I also had really supportive parents. I look back, and I'm a parent now of two teenagers, at the decisions they made to allow me to go to Taiwan in the very first place. Their belief that as a journalist, I would be 
very much um, satisfied there, but also curious enough to make my way. It was really everything and gave me the confidence I needed. And I have to say, both of them who are not journalists, that's a brave move on their part to believe that I would be fine out there in the world. And I took that to heart as a young person and also this very moment. I also wanted to say that, you know, frontline journalism, the journalism in general that we practice, doesn't happen without lawyers, journalists, of course, producers, directors, and editors, and also without the support of public media. We would not be who we are today without the support of WGBH and, of course, PBS, the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. And I have to mention that the work we do at Frontline is fiercely independent, but it has the support of public media and always has. I'm carrying on that tradition, but the foundation is there. And it's a strong one, and it's a really, really important one when you think about the world in which we publish. I also wanted to thank my incredible family, my husband, Arun Roth, who is a journalist, and my children, um, Arjun and Mira, who are really the light of my life. And of course, around our dinner table, you know, questions range from how do we get to praxis tonight all the way to are your journalists safe mom who are operating in Ukraine? These are grave and important questions that my kids ask around the table and support the work that we all do. So I'm deeply grateful to them for their curiosity as well and also for their support and of course Arun's. So most of all, I wanted to thank all of you at the New England First Amendment Coalition for this award and for honoring me with it and as an extension, the work of Frontline and all the really amazing journalists who are in my midst. So thank you again.